Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Recently, I've been looking around at a bunch of different monitors, trying to figure out what I want. I had a 4K monitor for a long time, I moved to an ultra wide for a while, and now we're circling back to a 4K. Uh, part of my problem during this process is I haven't actually spent the time to sit down, uh, figure out what I want, and make a decision where six months from now I'm not thinking, I think I need to find something else. Monitors are tricky because they don't update as frequently as some other tech does. You'll find new models for sale that could actually have released up to five years ago. And you can never really trust things like Amazon reviews unless they're resoundingly negative. You'll often find things are reviewed very well that are actually not that great, depending on who you are and how you're using your monitor. So it makes it easy to get pulled into buying something that maybe isn't the right fit. This is exactly what's happened to me in the past. So this go around, I went into discovery mode and tried to find exactly what I wanted. I was reading spec sheets and looking up different displays, uh, talking to people I knew who owned models that I was looking at. And I ended up purchasing this, the 27 inch LG 27UP850W Ultrafine 4K monitor. So why choose this LG Ultrafine over some other common models, like say a Mac Studio or a Samsung M8, or why not a more budget friendly option? There are a bunch of reasons. There are literally dozens of things to look for in a monitor, and I really want to touch on what some of those things actually mean, and if they really even matter. The number one thing that makes a good monitor is a good display. I don't think that there's any doubting that. You've got a few panel types to choose from here, but really the only two that you should be looking at, or at least the two that are the most common, are VA panels that are in a lot of new monitors. Most ultrawides have VA panels and popular models like the Samsung M series. And your other option is an IPS, which is what this LG Ultrafine is. IPS has superior color and viewing angles compared to other panel types. If you're doing any kind of color critical work, this is probably the panel you'll want to reach for. Uh, they're not as good at handling contrast like a VA panel, but VAs aren't nearly as good at dealing with color. A decent VA panel is going to reach about 90% of the DCI P3 color gamut, where an IPS can get up to 95 or 98%. Uh, this LG here goes up to 95%, which is definitely on the upper end of the scale when it comes to color coverage and accuracy. Your blacks aren't going to be as dark as they likely will be on a VA panel, but this does have pretty good black uniformity. VA panels have pretty bad viewing angles, as I mentioned. It doesn't take much to see shifts in saturation and color, and they also have slow pixel transitions from light to dark that often lead to things like black smearing or ghosting. I experienced these pain points firsthand having used a VA panel for the last half year, so it is really nice to get away from that with this IPS panel. LG does say, at least in the spec sheets, that this is calibrated out of the box, but there is a hardware calibration studio available if you need to make any adjustments to your color profile. Uh, this screen also supports HDR10 which some of these more expensive 5K monitors and some new Dells do not, so an added benefit there. Also, it's important to note that LG is one of the few manufacturers that actually makes IPS screens. And for me, having a company that has more control over their product and is actually the one producing the components usually makes for an overall better product. A lot of companies actually get their panels from LG, one of them being Apple. As you might have heard, the new Mac Studio display contains a 5K panel that's shockingly similar to the one that's in the LG Ultrafine 5K. And well, that's because it is likely the same screen, just with a different backlight panel. The Mac Studio has 600 nits peak brightness, while the LG 5K comes in at 500. Uh, this 27UP850 Ultrafine I have here goes to 400 nits peak brightness, but don't let that fool you, this does still get plenty bright. IPS panels are usually going to fall between 200 and 500 nits, so 400 is definitely on the upper end of that scale. Uh, granted, it's not going to be the same as a mini LED panel that can peak over a thousand nits like in a MacBook Pro or a mini LED TV, but as long as this isn't sitting in direct sunlight, it does just fine. Uh, I have this LG Ultrafine sitting in my basement and it's generally pretty dark down here as it is. I get some light from one window in the morning, but overall the brightness levels are great for this area. Coming back to those 5K displays for a second, I think anyone who pays attention to Apple product releases has seen the general uproar when it comes to the studio display. 
Now, the price is pretty steep, ranging anywhere from $1,600 to $2,300, which is obviously not in a lot of folks' budgets. Uh, the 5K Ultra Fine is about $1,300, a little bit less with many of the same features. It's definitely not as pretty as the Mac in terms of build quality and materials. Uh, the interesting thing is if you move down to a 4K, similar screens will be about half or even less of that cost. Uh, the 27UP850W will run you just over $500. A 5K monitor is definitely going to be a tad sharper if you're really looking. You're probably going to notice it most on things like text and high contrast edges, but overall it's not that different. And it does take a little bit more GPU power to run a 5K versus a 4K. If you really feel like you need that extra thousand pixels for $700 more, then go for it. Another option would just be to buy two 4K monitors, which would still be cheaper than one 5K. Personally, I love the pixel density on this 4K Ultrafine. My last monitor in this space was an ultrawide that was 3440 by 1440 resolution. And it's just so much nicer to move back to a 4K where I can pick out all the individual pixels and see all the rough edges. I can still comfortably split screen different windows, whether that be for software development or if I need two side-by-side -side browsers open, I'm taking notes, whatever it is, I don't have any pain points there. 4K content plays great if I'm just sitting back watching videos and having that accurate color I mentioned earlier is great for anything, whether that be color grading, editing photos and illustration. While this monitor does only have a 60 Hertz refresh rate, I really don't feel that I need anything higher than that. In the case of this 27UP850 and a lot of other monitors that are sort of premium-ish quality geared towards productivity or office use, it might seem weird to only have a 60 Hertz panel. Everyone talks so much about this spec these days, but if you look around, the 5K models that I just talked about, the Samsung M8, and higher end Dell monitors, all of those are 60 Hertz, and that is for good reason. Your average Joe probably isn't going to see much difference between say a 60 Hertz panel and a 120 Hertz panel, but I can almost guarantee you that anyone who is using their machine for gaming will almost certainly be able to tell the difference, uh, but that's not what this lineup of monitors were really made for. So when I talk about video editing, web browsing, office apps, all those kinds of things, this is all I really need here. If I was gaming, sure, that would probably change, but for those things, 60 Hertz is perfectly fine. The panel aside, there are still some really important factors when considering a monitor. Uh, some things people are likely to consider are things like bezel size, build materials, the overall look itself. Admittedly, the LG 27UP850 is fairly ordinary in a lot of ways, but that W at the end of the model number does indicate that this has a white base color, and it also comes with all white accessories and cables as well. I do prefer brighter colors most of the time where possible when it comes to electronics, as you might have gathered if you've seen a lot of the other products that I have featured on this channel. Along the white backside of the display are all your ports. You have two HDMI inputs, one display port, two USB-A ports, and one USB-C that supports data transfer and has up to 96 watts power delivery. So just like a lot of these super expensive monitors, you can actually have your MacBook or your laptop charging from this monitor, which is really handy. You've also got a headphone jack there as well. Definitely a nice array of ports. This is a huge plus for me working off of a Mac mini where I don't have a lot of ports to begin with and I can offload some of the things that I have at my desk like my light bar that sits on my monitor. But on a lot of cheaper budget options, highly likely that you're gonna find only a couple of inputs and that's it. Uh, this is one benefit of moving up and spending a little bit more on a decent monitor. The LG Ultrafine also has built-in speakers, but they're not my favorite. I probably only use them if I absolutely had to, but that's not the reason why you're buying this monitor. It does also come with a great little stand as well that supports tilt, pivot, and height adjustments. It's nice and stable. On a lot of these bigger monitors, the stands can be flimsy, but that isn't the case here. I tried it out a little bit before I moved the monitor over to my pre-existing mount, 
Now, if you are like me and you do mount your monitor, it does have a 100 millimeter vase mount on the back as well. I think overall this has a really nice combination of features and functionality. It's a great display and has great quality at a decent price. You can really go to either end of the spectrum here and buy something with more features, higher specs for more money, or you can go to the other end and spend less and sort of move back a little bit on the quality in the feature set. It's really all dependent on how you use your machine and what is important to you. If you want a 5K monitor with great design, great speakers, all that good stuff, maybe you can justify the cost of a $2,000 display. <laughs> I'm definitely not one of those people, uh, but I have bought and used enough of these things to know that I don't want to go to the other end of the spectrum either and skimp on things that will affect my everyday use, especially if I'm going to be spending a lot of time at my desk. This LG Ultrafine 4K has an excellent display. I love that the panel is made by the company who actually produces the monitor. Uh, sure, there are some things in here that you may not like. It's likely not going to be ideal for gaming. Uh, the speakers aren't great, but given the price, it does have an outstanding picture, great port selection. And for things like office use and productivity, it's really hard to beat. I would consider this one of the best 4K monitors available for Mac. If you have any questions about this monitor that I did not cover in this video, pop those in the comments down below, or if you just want to say hi and let me know how your day is going. If you enjoyed this video, press up against that like button. If you want to see more tech related content, or if you just want to go for a long walk along the beach together, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.